Hi all, welcome to my channel, welcome to my world, this is the world of Wayne. Today I'm going to be doing pack 3 of the Agora Models release of Build the Corvette Stingray. As you can see I've laid out everything we've done at the moment. If you remember in the last pack, we did this amazing engine here. The whole engine done in a pack. That's crazy, but today we're going to be working on the suspension and we're starting the chassis as well, including the internal floor pan. So uh, quite a big lot of stuff in this box, which is pretty much explains why the box was so big as well. Now, if you like what you see, you want to get this for yourself. I have put the link down here to the Agora Models website and you can get this all the way from pack one, but there is a lot to do today. So going to get straight on it without further ado. Let's get cracking. So it's all going to start in stage 16 today where we're preparing the front chassis. So I'm just going to get all of this out. Now as you can see here, look, the chassis is all metal. Excellent. And I'm going to be putting these brackets on. Now these brackets are stamped with an L or an R. This one's an R. So I'm going to be starting with this one first. And they're actually going to sit on these points just like that there. They're going to be held in with AM screws. Once I've just got this screwed in, I'm going to give you a close up of this just so you can see which way this goes in because there is a number of ways this could go in, but it should look like that. Do the same on the other side. This is the left side going in here. Again, make sure that's nice and tight. Excellent. And now, now, both in place. Now, we're going to be putting these brake hoses in. As you can see here, I've got this tiny little connector that these are going to go on to. I'm holding it this way round. I'm going to put some glue just on the end here. I do this with every one of my builds now because I'm just fed up of pipes slipping out and I have no idea where they go. So by doing it this way, I'm not going to have that problem. So if this one's going on the right hand side, and this is the longest pipe, on the top one, I'm going to have the shorter pipe. So again, a bit of glue around there and put that into place. Perfect. Now this is gonna be going in this way with the thicker lug going into the chassis just here. And I'm probably gonna put some glue in just to keep that into place. So once again, I'm just coating that here and I'll get that pushed in. Again, by doing that, I'm ensuring that's not going to move. And that is all there is to do in that stage. Now check this out, stage 17, there's a whole heap to do here. It's all to do with a suspension. This is going to be fun. Okay, so first of all, we need the control arm brackets. So we've got this one here. And this one here now they are stamped r and l and the first thing i want to do is put these brackets onto these control arms if you look on the close-up camera it's hard i know because it's black on black with black screws but these are just going to go on top just there like that they're going to be held in with fm screws all of these are metal so i am putting oil on them just to get them all the way in and as you can see they're both in place. I'm then going to turn these control arms over here and I'm going to be putting these cylinders just through this side like this. I want to hold them in place once again with FM screws. I do find it very fascinating how it doesn't matter how many 1.8 vehicles I do on the channel, it's amazing how different they all are in the way that they go together, especially with things that you'd expect to be exactly the same on all models like the suspension that we're working on here. This is completely different to what we normally do. So when that cylinder's through, just like that, we're gonna do the same on the other side. And once again, that's both of those in place. So we need to match up the control arms now. So this is stamped with an R there. So I'm gonna need the R shaft that looks like this. Just going to keep that there for a second, which means that the left side is going over here. And I'm going to be putting him in this way into the gap just there. It's going to be held in 
with some KM screws. These are very long screws. They're gonna go down there. So I will put these into some oil. And I just wanna ensure that it is going into the shaft at the other side. I am using my bigger screwdriver for this, just to help that out. And then once again, another KM screw, just through the other side, and get that screwed in. Not the easiest thing to do. Getting that lined up. But definitely oil is your friend here. But when it's in, it should look just like that. Going to do the same on the other control arm. And there you go, they're both in place. Bring over the front chassis that we started working on here. And I've got these cylinder rods that are gonna go into place. Now they have got a D-shaped pattern on them. So they can only go one side in here like this. So one in there and one just in the other side over here, like that. They're gonna be held in with DM screws from the other side, just like this here. Again, I think I'm gonna use my big screwdriver for this to make sure they're in nice and tight excellent and there you go they're both in just like that all that's left to do then is to take the suspension springs and put them over the top of those cylinders like that we then want to take these control arms and we're going to be putting this side making sure that it's stamped with an l on this left side here so it's going to go on this way make sure it goes down the spindle it's going to fit just like that and the right side exactly the same way into the spindle so it's fitting into place just like that there now they're going to be held in by these shafts here with dm screws you do want to make sure that that is engaged to that pin there got the dm screws here and we want two in each side so one in this side here make this nice and tight and just one in the other side just there and then once that's nice and tightly in there, we're just going to do exactly the same with the other side here. Now you know you've done that right because you should be able to spring these down like that. If this isn't engaged properly here or here, it will stop that happening. Put that to one side and I need the front chassis cover now, which looks just like that. We want it this way round. And I'm going to be putting the left wheel that we created last time onto this section here. So basically the way this works is we take this, we're gonna put it underneath here so it goes onto this section just like that. It's gonna be held in with CM screws. Now it is taking two of these CM screws, get them in nice and tight. And then the control arm we had left from the last pack, that's just gonna be doing exactly the same thing on the other side there. Obviously we haven't got the wheel connected to that. Again, connected with CM screws. So I'm going to put these in very loosely at the moment. And then tighten them up. Excellent. So that is how that should look. So the way this is going to go in, if I hold this just like this here, this spindle just there, or this lug here, is going to go under this section just there. And this should then be able to rotate round to the underside of this section that we've just put in that's going to be held in with an lm screw this is a really tricky stage this one make sure that's in nice and tight excellent that's in and then keeping these brake wires out the way here i'm just going to be rotating this whole section around here so it's going to fit in just like that. Look how that pulls that in. I think that's magical how that happens. We're going to be putting this in with CM screws just into these two holes here. Very clever design. I'm impressed with that. <laughs> As you can probably hear in my voice. So here's the first CM screw and just put the second CM screw in just here. And that is all there is to do in that absolutely massive stage. So in stage 18, as you can probably expect, we're going to be assembling the next wheel. Because we are now on that stage of fitting that wheel. And to do that, I'm going to be taking this side of the wheel 
and putting in the first part of the rim which is going to fit perfectly in there like that turn it over and put the other side of the rim in here lining up the holes they're going to be held together with cm screws so one there and one on the other side we put the wheel cover on now. There is a notch just on this side here, which we need to put next to the valve there. That's going to go in like this. Perfect. Holding this in with DP screws just from the underside. And these are going into these holes just here. And we need two of these. So that's one and two. And just so I don't lose this, we've got the spinner just going on that side there. And that is all there is to do in that stage. In stage 19, we're going to be mounting the anti-roll bar and the front right wheel. So, get all these out. And as you can see in this box here, we do have the anti-roll bar. Amongst other tidy details in here, let's get that out. Now, to install this roll bar in, we want it to be this way round, looking like that. I'm going to be putting this just onto the car there. It's going to be held in with some brackets which are going to have DM screws in them. I have loaded one up already here, which I was hoping will make my life easier, but I don't think it's going to. Let's get this in, as you can see, because it is quite a, a fiddly thing to put in, as you can see. But that's one side in. I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. Now, once they're in place, we're going to be lifting this anti-roll bar up. And these are basically going to be going onto these points here, and here and they're held in with DP screws so I'm going to do this side first because it's already fixed into place line it up just get a screw through the top there you don't have to make this too tight just tight enough to hold that into place like that do the same on the other side and there you go that's all in place like that we can put that to one side because I'm now going to be making the brake drum. So for that, I have these two sections here to put in. Make sure it's round the right way. R2 is gonna go on this way if the lug is at the top, and push that into place. R1 is gonna go on this way over here. Now what I think is typical is that they want me to remove the longer <laughs> brake hose that I actually glued into place. So I'm not gonna be doing that. I'll add that afterwards, but we do know where this is gonna go, just into there. I want to fit this cover here to the right suspension. So I want it round this way. It's going to go on top like this. Line up the holes just here and here, holding that in with some DM screws. Now, bringing this over to the car here, we're going to be putting this into place on these wishbones. So the bottom one is going to go in here. The top one is going to go onto this top one just here. It's held in with a JM screw here. And the bottom one is actually held in with an LM screw. So again, line that up and get that in here. Again, oil is your friend there. Now, just as a temporary thing at the moment, I am now just going to plug this long wire into the pin here. It is harder once it's on the uh, wheel, I have to say, but I can get this in. As you can see, that's in there like that for now. All we're going to do then, take the wheel, bring the brake drum over. There is a locating lug in here, which will help you identify which way round this goes, just like that. It's held in with two DM screws, just through the smaller holes here. So one in here. I have already put some oil on this. You can probably see that just there. And one in this side. Perfect. Let's just take out this spinner, like that. Put in this washer. Make sure it's sitting in flat there. It's gonna be held on with a CM screw. So I'm gonna make sure I've got one of them ready. That's in lovely and tight. I'll put that spinner back on. As you can see, we've now got two wheels onto this suspension. That's crazy. <laughs> okay, all we're gonna do then is just tidy this wire up here 
and it's going to be tidied up going into the indent that we've got just around here like this held into place with the little black strips now the loose ends that we've got from the other wheel here let's get that out is just going to be going onto the vacant nipple that we've got on this side here I don't think this is going to come out so I can just thread that on like that and that is all there is to do in that stage if you thought the last stage was big check this stage out we're going to be attaching the steering linkage now just looking at all these pieces this looks quite tricky so let's see if we can do this so first thing I need is the central steering bar which looks just like this and I'm going to be putting this steering motor which I've got here just on the end and it's just going to press into place hopefully like that so it's this way around the next thing I'm going to do is take this cylinder looking like this and having it this way round this is going to be going underneath this point just here it's going to be held in with a GP screw it is quite a long screw this one perfect just like that another small bit of linkage here which is going to be going onto this point just here and it actually goes underneath the linkage but it's held in with an AM screw so get that screwed in and that's that linkage in just there now I need some linkage which looks just like this but I want it to be stamped with an R so I'm just checking here and there is an R stamped on this one just here and they're going to be held in with mm screws so i'm just going to put an mm screw through this side here get this into place now the actual mark that says l or r should be towards the outside here so that's the first one in position i think that's what way around it goes so just have a close look at that i'm going to do the same on the other side very fiddly these stages are oops almost needed to call a medic then <laughs> perfect so that now looks just like that now we've got a couple of hoses that we're going to be pushing into the end here now these hoses are stamped again left and right so this one's the right hand hose so that's going to go into the right hand side port just here like that the left hand side going in to the left hand side port push this down a tiny bit more there you go I wouldn't go too hard pushing them in because there's a danger you're going to break them off and then these pipes are going to go into the holes on the motor just over here so get them into place one there and one there so that it's pretty detailed doesn't it look at that <laughs> Okay, I'm going to put that to one side. We're going to bring over what we were working on previously, but I do want it upside down here because I do have some brackets to put into place. And the first one looks just like this. It's actually going to go just onto this point here. So it's going to sit in just there, held in with a DM screw. And then I want to take the steering linkage here and have it this way round. And I'm going to be putting this section that I've just created just over what I've just put in just there. Now I'm going to be holding each end to the wheels with MM screws. So one in this side. Perfect. And then just one in the other side. they've gone in beautifully excellent I just need this flanged NM screw now and that's going to secure the linkage just here 
So I must have done that right because everything fits perfectly there. So now that's all in place. So theoretically, when I turn the wheels, the other one moves. Excellent. <laughs> so the last thing to do is to take the cylinder rod here. This is just going to go into the bracket. It is shaped, D-shaped pattern there. Just like that. It's held in from this side with an EP screw. Get that in here. There you go. That's in. Bring over the chassis cover. This is plastic, just so you know. I want it this way round. And this is just going to be going into position here. And that's held in with two HP screws. These screws are quite tiny, but they do go in no problems at all. So that's one, and this one's two. And that is all there is to do in another massive stage. <laughs> In stage 21, bigger stage this is, but I don't think there's much to do. We're gonna be connecting the chassis frame. So let's get all of this out. Now this chassis is all metal. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be putting these tabs just into positions here, here, over this side, and one here as well. And they're all gonna be held in with DM screws from the other side. So I'll get all of those in, two each one, and then uh, show you what that looks like. Now bringing over what we created earlier on, we are now gonna mount this to the car. So quite simply, this section here is just gonna go onto these two parts just there, held in with HM screws. It's amazing watching this grow just in front of your eyes. So I'll just gently put some HM screws in just to hold it. And then I'll put all four of these in place. There you go. Look at that. Excellent. Okay, turn this back over. And you should notice just here we've got two clips on the chassis frame. I'm going to be taking this long pipe here. And I'm just going to be putting it into those clips there. So one here. And one there. Just like that. Now this is the main brake hose. But we don't do anything with that now. That's all there is to do in that stage. So stage 22, massive part this one, as you can see, we've got the cockpit floor. That's what the instructions are calling it. I always call it a floor pan. Let's keep that to one side because lots of little details in here, which I'm just gonna get out. I need this little spring first. Bringing over the car and turning it upside down. I'm gonna be putting the spring just in position into this little hole at the back there, like that. Hopefully you can see that. I can then turn that over, try to ensure that that spring doesn't come out, because I'm going to be putting the floor pan looking like this, just over the top of the car, like that there. It's going to be held in from the underside with these IP screws. Let's get one ready. Turn it over. Oh, typical. This has came out. Let's just put that back in. Before I put this down. The spring's still in there. So that's a good sign. IP screws are just going into these holes here. So. We've got one, two, three, four. I'm then going to be taking this handbrake linkage cable here. And I'm threading two pins. Just through the holes in the chassis here. So let's get them in like that very tricky way to do this but i want to put this spring now into this handbrake linkage cable it's probably best to remove the spring and do it this way around i'm gonna put the spring in the bottom of this handbrake linkage here make sure it goes all the way in thread this through the two holes in the chassis put the spring in this side So it's in place so that's fitted everything in there and then this side here this hole is going to go into the hole we can see on the floor pan there it's going to be held in with an ip screw got that here let's line that up into position here and get that in excellent now i do have 
a little guide which is going to keep this into place this is going to go over the top here push that in and that is all there is to do in that stage See what I mean about this being an absolute ginormous pack with loads to do in it. Let's get these parts out. We're going to be doing the heat isolation shield. And the first thing we're going to do, which we have to do on every 1.8 build sooner or later, is to create a universal joint like this. This is normally where I'm going to have an accident, but we'll see how we go. Need some AP screws, and I'm just going to screw them in either side of that little X or crossover section in the middle there. So... Please don't hurt myself. When we put this in, we also want to make sure that the sides are out because we're going to be putting this end to the other side. Let's do this. The way I do this now is I just put the screw in just tight enough to hold it into place. Then I do the other side. And then I tighten them up. So that doesn't look too bad. I haven't hurt myself yet, so that's always a bonus. Okay, then I'm going to be taking the other end of this. That's going to go over the top here. And again, AP screw to put this into place. And there you go. We've got a universal joint on that way there. Bring over the chassis and the floor pan that we were working on. And I'm going to put the heat shield just down the middle here so it's going to go in here this is very detailed having a heat shield in here don't be afraid to squeeze this and do whatever you need to do to get this into position there you go because it needs to sit just there i'm going to hold that in with an ap screw we've got one screw hole just inside here Hold that floor pan into place. And there we go. That's got in perfect. On my car, if that wasn't secured in, this would be rattling around all over the place. <laughs> We're going to be taking these reinforcements now. They are stamped. This one's an L with the nuts on this side facing towards the chassis. They're just going to go into the holes just here. So one this side. Get this in. They can actually go in one way because the lugs are different sizes you see we've got a small one and a large one do the same on the right hand side one perfect and those reinforcements are in place and that is all there is to do in that stage so the last stage of this pack as you can see here is a nice simple one to finish with we've just got the start of the exhaust pipes and all we're going to do, bring the car back up. I'm going to have this round this way, just to help me follow the instructions. And I'm going to be putting the left one in here like that. Let's just get that over that section. And then the right one, exactly the same way, over this section here, into that section just like that. It's going to be held in with DM screws just here. That one's one. And this one's two. And then all we're doing is going to take the cross beam which comes in this. And this is going to go over the side. Just like that there. And I am just pushing that into place. At the moment we're not actually screwing that into place. But that is all there is to do in that stage. That's all there is to do in that pack. What an amazing in-depth pack that is. Looking absolutely brilliant though. There you go. There was a lot to do there. Just uh, for people who are wondering, that took one hour, 35 minutes of filming time. So I don't know how long that is when I've edited this down, but uh, it is looking really detailed and really good, as you can see there. If you want to get this for yourself, get it from Agora Models, and I'll put the link down here so you can get that all the way from pack one. But I really hope you liked that video. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please remember to subscribe. Other than that, take care.